Hi guys and welcome to this tutorial where we will learn how to create a container view controller. So in this example, you see that we have a segmented controller at the top and we have a view at the bottom. And every time I choose a different option over here on the segmented control, the color changes. So in case you're wondering, I'm not changing the background color. In fact, what I'm doing is that I'm changing the child view over here. So yeah, if you are keen to find out how I do this, uh, continue to watch on. Hey guys, welcome back. So uh, we're going to start with a single view application. So I'm just going to call it a container views. Uh, let's do it this way. Container views demo. You can call it whatever you want. Again, I'm going to be using the storyboard. Click the next button and I'll just save it on my desktop. All right. So uh, first, let's go to the main.storyboard and then we're going to add uh, what we call a uh, segmented controller. So click on the plus icon over here and let's go with a segmented control. All right, let's maybe have um, three segments. So we have the first, the second and the third, but hmm, the third is not showing up. I think that's because we have to come over here to segment two and then we're just going to type in third. All right, so let's just pin it somewhere at the top. I'm going to do the auto layout. Let's have it uh, maybe 24 from the top. And then we don't need the um, leading nor trailing uh, anchor. We just need to uh, say that we want to pin it horizontally in the container. All right, so um, the storyboard will kind of figure out like, you know, what's the uh, appropriate uh, width for this. Okay, so we want to link this action events into our uh, view controller. So let me just hit the Alt key and click on the view controller file on the left and it opens a new panel over here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create this um, IB action. So I'm going to call it uh, segmented control changed. All right, so the arguments here, um, it, I think in the older version of Xcode, there used to be the segmented control over here, but it's okay. We can always uh, uh, do a casting uh, later. All right, so what we're going to do now is that we want to get the index of the uh, segmented control that is being selected. So what we need to do is we're going to do a guard led, uh, segmented control equals the sender, as UI segmented control else return. So what we are saying is that, hey, this sender, let's make sure that this sender is of type UI segmented control. Otherwise, don't do anything. All right, so what we're gonna do is that, let's just quickly print out segmented control dot, I think it's called selected index. Yep, selected segment index. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly run this project. Okay, so I'm going to look at the console over here and uh, as I select the various um, options in the segmented control, it should print out the uh, statement over here. Alright, so let me just uh, open up this uh, console at the bottom, let's bring the simulator back and then you see we have one. Why is that one? It's because this index is zero, right? Zero, one and two. So yep, this is uh, what we expect. All right, so what we want to do is that every time I click on a uh, an option over here, I'm going to show a um, a child view, you know. So I'm going to have three different child views, and every time I click, I'm just going to change and, and, and toggle them. All right, so what I'm going to do is that, um, let's see. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we're going to create a UI view. Oops, not over here. I'm going to click on this guy here. UI view. Let me just drag this in here. All right, so this will be my container view. Let me close this guy. All right, and let me just expand this all the way to the bottom. And let's add some constraints. We are going to do 24 from the top, uh, left and bottom, and the right, we're just going to have it zero. So uh, in the meantime, let's just add a color so that you know we can kind of differentiate um, 
this area from uh, the rest of the uh, the view over here okay and I'm going to add a uh, IB outlet to the um, to the view controller so I'm just going to call this container view so yep pretty straightforward over here all right so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create three different uh, sub views so let's do a private let first view this is will be of type view okay so let view equals to UI view return view and then let's uh, have this view be of color red okay so I'm gonna do the same for the rest okay let's have this orange and we'll call this the second view and we're just gonna do the third one what color can we do maybe yellow and they were all yellow <laughs> all right so we have the third view over here okay so what's next is that um, I'm gonna create a function over here and uh, private function again private file this will be called set child view okay so this view I will call uh, the sub view here UI view okay so what I'm gonna do is that every time this segmented control change I'm going to add a I'm going to say that hey this container view is either of type first view second view or the third view over here all right so what I'm going to do is that I need to create something called a current view over here so private var current view this is will be of type UI view all right so what this means is that this current view could be any of this view over here all right so every time I set a child view I'm going to say okay if let's say I select the uh, the second index over here I'll say that hey current view should be the second view and I'll display it over here all right so what I need to do is that every time I set a child view I have to first remove the current view so I'll do current view dot remove from super view all right and I'll say current view equals to this sub view okay let's have it a small v and then I'll do current view dot translate auto resizing mass into constraints let's have it to be false and the reason why I'm doing this is so that I can uh, add the constraints to it programmatically and then I'll say container view dot add sub view this will be current view and I can confidently do a uh, false unwrap over here because I have this um, on line 44 I, I explicitly say that hey current view will be of type sub view over here and you know that this is not an option so it's it's safe to do that but um, if you are like me and you don't like to uh, use the false unwrap what we can do is that we can either use a gut statement or an if let statement okay maybe we'll do a gut, we'll do a gut statement instead so get gut let current view equals to current view else return so with this gut statement I no longer need to do a false unwrap okay and then what I'm going to do is to add some constraints over here and I'm going to do it via the let me make this a little bit bigger NS layout constraints dot activate all right so I'm going to activate and this is where I, I pass in all the parameters over here all right so I'll say current view dot top ankle dot constraint to I'm going to constrain to uh, the container view right so you'll be oh, I'm not going to use this one dot constraint oh, let me just let me just kill this a little bit okay here we go dot constraint okay which one do we want we want this one constraint to container view dot top anchor all right because we are using uh, this activate function we don't need to put uh, like you know is active equals to true okay we just need to Put in the next uh, condition so we want to have the leading anchor to be the same as the container view as well as the trailing anchor trailing anchor right here and what's the last one we want the bottom anchor right so we want the uh, current view to take the full constraint of the container view okay so let's do it this way we don't need a comma over here because those are the four conditions that we need 
All right, so pretty straightforward stuff right here. Okay, so now this is the part where we wanna um, set the different uh, sub views depending on the selection of the segmented control. So we have uh, previously uh, tested this and every time we click on it, it shows that it's either a zero, a one, or a two. Right, so what we can do is that we can actually do a switch um, segmented control dot selected index. So we know that it's going to be a zero case one or a case two. Uh, this is not really the most ideal way to do it. <laughs> Maybe I'll just show you how I do it this way first and later we can talk about how we can optimize this so that it can be a little bit more dynamic. All right, so we're going to say that, hey, um, when uh, index zero has been selected, we are going to do set child view. And then which view is this going to be? We want this to be the first view. All right, so pretty straightforward stuff over here. Second view, and there'll be the third view, right? This is right, yep, third view. And uh, switch must be exhaustive. So, so what, what, what this means is that um, when you do a switch statement, um, it, it needs to cater for all the different cases over here. So because you know we are switching an int, int, and therefore you know int can be from zero to, to infinity, right? So unless this is an enum, otherwise we have to do something like a default over here. So I'm just gonna call it default brick. That means if it's anything other than zero, one, or two, we're not gonna do anything. All right, pretty straightforward stuff here. I'm gonna run the project. And I can also delete the print statement. All right, so right over here as I click on the second one, I have the orange. When I click on the third one, I have the yellow. And the first one will be the red. But you do realize that when I run this for the first time, it is not showing me the red color view. And why is that so? That's because in our view the load, we are not doing anything. And this segmented control change only happens when there is an event, right? So what we can do is that we can just uh, say setup initial view and let's have that be a private function. So we're going to say that, okay, upon view the load, we are going to um, set child view. We can do it this way. All right, I think this would work. All right, so the first view, we have the rate, the second and the third. All right, pretty straightforward stuff here. Yep, so as I was uh, mentioning earlier, I think this might not really be the best way to do it um, because you have to define uh, you know, every single view according to your switch cases. I think what I would have preferred to do is to do something like uh, to create an array of views. So maybe I'll just do private uh, private let um, so, uh, what I call that um, views okay and uh, I can't quite sub views can I I can't okay maybe let me do it this way okay sub views oh child views maybe child ch ch child views oh okay maybe that would be good. I can do it this way, first view, second view, and then the third view. All right, and I can't do it this way because I think I will have to do a lazy, lazy private var. Does this work? All right, doesn't complain, that's good. Okay, so I can do it this way. Um, okay, so I can say set, Child, okay, let let child view equals to self dot child views. Okay, self dot child views of type segmented control dot selected. Okay, and then I can just do it this way. Okay, then I don't need the uh, switch statement anymore. Will this work? I believe it will work. Let's have a look. Yeah, it works perfectly well. Okay, but there's a caveat over here. So 
Um, although I would prefer this method, but one of the big problem if let's say I accidentally remove this, what I guess what I guess what's gonna happen? <laughs> I think you already know it's going to crash index out of range, right? So if you're gonna use this method, you have to really add uh, some checks over here. Okay, so how I would do it is uh, rather than doing it this way. I will say that hey, if self dot child views dot indices is there indices um, child views dot mm, is it enumerate dot indices? Let me see what's what's that. Uh, contains is it contains? No no no. Sorry about that. Let me see. Self dot child views dot. Um, can't remember what it is. Oh, is it this one? Dot contains. Oh yeah, this is the one. All right. <laughs> segmented control dot segmented. Okay. If. Okay. So what 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 this uh, does is that hey if it, it's gonna check that if the child view contains this index, then we do something. All right. So, for for instance, if let's say segmented control, uh, the selected segment index is four, and this will not pass, and therefore it will not execute whatever that's uh within the brackets. So I can actually just do it this way. So you see over here, if I run this, I think it's gonna be fine. Okay, the first, the second is fine. When I go to the third, oh, it works as well. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so I, 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 I let, let me give you an example. If I'm just going to remove this too. All right, so if I don't add uh, line 66, it's going to crash, right? But I don't think it's going to crash. See? So it just, it just ignores it. So this is really helpful when you want to, you know, kind of get the element within the array. Just use the array.indices.contains and just put that index in. So we can uh, optimize this a little bit further. That index equals to this. And then we can just put this as index. Oops. We can put this as index as well. And I think this is my solution. I will do it this way. All right. Guys, I hope there is something that you can learn over here. And uh, if you are, you know, having to implement this, um, this is, um, I think, a really awesome way to do it. All right, cheers, guys.